Rodita Sid says, yeah, but which one of them is gay? Oh, there'll be plenty of gays, let me tell you. And that brings me to the subject of Concord, the main subject tonight. I really want to do, I wanted to do a full research on this because uh, this is an example of a modern game that showed up and that totally crashed to the point where the game is getting withdrawn. And they are, they are, they are emitting reimbursement. So uh, I wanted to really look into the detail because I think there's lots to learn and I'm developing my own game. I want, uh, I want my game to be successful. I don't want to commit these same mistakes as these big studios. Uh, DK Shadow says $200 million down the, dra down the drain. I think they violated so many rules. So many rules of what makes a game interesting these days. I don't think the game is that terrible. It's, I look at the game, uh, the graphics are superior. If anything, they are very high graphics, you know? Um, but, but we'll see. We'll see what was wrong in the end and what annoyed people. And the first rule is, if you are just a random chaotic shooter style, un unless you are a cinematic kind of game where people want to buy it and sit in front of it and kind of enjoy it like a very long movie, unless you are that kind of game, that kind of game you can sell. But if you're just a crappy shooter, you have to be free to play. You have to be free to play because you are... The fun thing with these crappy shooters is that they attract a lot of people and you end up playing against humans and that's great. But if you're not a cinematic game, people don't want to pay for it. And anyways, you'll need to build up your base of users because ultimately your base of users, even if they don't pay you, even the free users, they are ultimately better than AI. So why is it that humans want to play against humans? It's because AI is just not good at, at making human-like movements and human-like errors. And we want, to, we want to, to fight against someone who is of equivalent capacity for talent and capacity for error. When you make NPC characters, they are either way too good and they are too perfect. And in a way, they are disbalanced with respect to a normal human. Or they, they really suck and they have these flaws that are totally ridiculous, but that's just how the AI is designed. So when you, ha when you make a game, your free-to-play crew, your 10,000 users who are not truly willing to pay for the game, but they occupy the space and they provide a human input to your game that makes it more pleasant for the person who's willing to pay. So the, the monetization of this game has been totally failed because they imposed a $40 cost to buy the game. That was a first error. Let's see the message that they published. Concord is going offline beginning September 6th, so that's in two days from now. However, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we had intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. While we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately and we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased the game for PS5 or PC. If you purchase the game for PlayStation 5 from the PlayStation Store, or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. Customers who purchase from other digital storefronts will also be refunded. I mean, this is very rare that an event like this happens where a company says, all right, we have messed up so hard. We're throwing back your money at you. <laughs> we don't want any trouble. And apparently there's been a massive investment put on making this game possible. So it's Totally stunning, but I guess they've had so little sales that throwing this money back wasn't that big of a problem uh, if it could save face and eventually allow for a relaunch. Uh, yesterday, I took a look at Concord <coughs> and tried to understand why it's failed so miserably. 
Wokeness is but one part of the picture. In this thread, I will try to explain why it's failed from both a business and design perspective as well. So you have free games that are, that are attracting 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 concurrent players. This game was 396 players right now, all-time peak at 697. One, the paywall. The hero shooter genre is already dominated by free-to-play games that have no entry fee. Why this matters, competitive games being freemium is a solved concept. <clears throat> These games thrive through word of mouth and have low barriers of entry, which helps spread that word. Look at this, you want the digital deluxe edition, 59.99 euros. The Concord regular, 39.99 euros. Nonsense. When I can get for free Fortnite, and there's nothing in this that's better than Fortnite, really. <clears throat> what they tried to do is a first person... It, it's, it makes me think about my project very much. Because in my project, what I noticed, I, I, I didn't want this to be the case. I, I first, I had the idea of a survivalist, competitive Dota style game. But eventually I realized that one of the big additions, in, compared to what's offered out there, is that uh, many games that are first person shooter, they are oriented around the gun. And it's a gun or a weapon of some kind. Whereas I, I'm divergent toward powers, skills, magics, uh, handling of the environment with shovels, tools, a very high diversity of actions that I want to do with the environment. And this is coming to be a very defining feature of my game. I think they tried to do something similar. Where I, I saw footage and will be watching gameplay of them, uh, they are. They have magics. They have instead of having just a gun that you shoot with it, they have these hand powers, and the girl can release a fireball with her hand. So they tried to insert kind of Dota style magic into the first person shooter genre, <coughs> uh, or, or I mean, I call it first person. Maybe it's not first person. It's camera on the side, but this this style of shooter game. So they have tried to insert multiple actions and fire effects into a game that usually is centered around guns. A very late open beta, it opened only last month, which means there was on about a month before the full release. The open beta was free, while the game cost $40, which alienates the open beta players by asking them to pay for a game they've been playing. So imagine you've been uh, playing for free for a month in the beta. It's a so-so game that's not really strongly above anything that's available. In fact, it's kind of below. And you have to suddenly pay $40 to be uh, just one month after trying it. Uh, for the beta players, it wasn't a soft boarding. A complicated, unintuitive class system to compare Overwatch 2 as three classes, Valorant as four, Concord as six. The names of the classes are not intuitive to understand either. Wardens, Breachers, Rangers, Anchors, Hunts, and Tacticians. Can you figure out what they do? Four. The character. Compare Concord and Valorant. Once again, in terms of character design, in Valorant, you can see the stylized design philosophy and the personality of the characters come through in their design. Concord, on the other hand, looks bland, stale, and not exciting. The marketing. Like the open beta, the marketing was also very delayed. The first gameplay trailer came out only two months ago. Beta advertisement coincided with the beta launch and some characters' abilities trailers were released only a few days ago. A recipe for zero hype. So basically, not creating expectation. You just drop the trailer on the public space, and the beta is already open. So there is not this wave of social media uh, fire taking on. It's already available. And... The fact that it's already accessible, too quick and too short, 
uh, totally removes the excitation that can build up. Um, and now you, you enter the subject of wokeness, just black characters, a, a fat black character. He says, ultimately Concord was destined to fail from poor design choices, poor timing on their marketing and open beta, and their terrible choice to have an entry fee in the competitive hero shooter genre was a recipe for massive flop. 700 players peak is still insane though. Uh, and so even GameStop is, uh, is dunking onto the game. Someone was saying that uh, can't play Saturday, but looking forward to trying it out. And GameStop says, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> they are rebuying the games. They are recalling the games. Someone was saying, dear fanboys, when a game on the console you don't own doesn't do very well, whether it's Concord or Hellblade or NES World Championship, it's not a win for you. Nobody won. And this person said, dear activist, when a game doesn't do very well, whether it's Concord or Suicide Squad, KTJL, because it's got so many problems like clunky gameplay, awful character design, cringe backstories, and outdated monetization systems, then it's abandoned and it's a win for us. Gamers won. Um, absolutely, it seems to be a game that comes from the top. You know, it's a game that was designed obviously with massive money because I can make a game that will be more successful than this with graphics that are way below this. Like clearly when I look at these graphics, I know it costs a lot to develop graphics of this level of quality. Let's look at gameplay here and see. First, uh, I'm not impressed by the layout. The layout is very cartoonish. Look at this. It's, uh, it's like cartoon overlay. Doesn't feel integrated. Doesn't feel natural. The players at the top feel like 2008, really. 2008 uh, levels of graphics, although it's not quite illustrated on screen, but we can see it here. Look, picture of player, picture of player. This is not super well integrated graphically. So the layout uh, seems to be weak, weak layout work. But look at the 3D graphics. This takes a lot of work. You have to pay, uh, you have to pay a graphist to be building all this 3D structure with the texture. There is enormous amounts of work in there, and enormous amounts of work on the diversity of effects that I'm seeing. Now look at this. Those are complex environments, complex mechanics of weapons. This is a shooter, basically a shooter game. Now look, superpowers with fireballs, collection of loot items, fire effects, fire line on the street here that we saw, healing. And when you look at general, the quality of this, like, this is high level graphics with texturing on rocks, on uh, irregular shapes. There has been some work. They, they had some money to do this. And when you look at the flow of the game, I don't see any particularly unprofessional flow issues. People were talking about clunky uh, mechanics. Certainly that's a flowing shooter to me. Now, weirdly, it seems that the players can fly basically and slowly jump and you can see the damage on the wall okay it's not it's not like stunning but there is some work there shady jesus says eight years to work on it john drake says 200 million dollars shady jesus says they had over 100 million dollars uh, yeah, in any case, uh, lots of money has been invested in this. So, a priori, this is not a floppy game, like low, 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 terrible game. This is, there's been work there. So there was something that was missing in the communication and the, 
in, in being in relation to the rest of the competitive scene that this game is showing in, basically they they showed as a lame addition to the shooter's genre. And I believe this is and lame in the way they monetized it, lame in the way they build the characters. Now, when you look at these characters, they don't feel particularly interesting. Like I, I don't I don't feel any interest in knowing more about the black woman or the guy with a hat. When you think about Team Fortress 2, that, that to me is the model of character uh, expansion, character exploring in games. You know, in Team Fortress 2, there were trailers released regularly where the spy, so the spy was a character. Now the spy is, is in all this war, why? It's because they had fo they had porn pictures of his mother. <laughs> oh, not not his was it his mother or his wife? Uh, anyways, uh, they dropped the they dropped the the dossier on the desk, and he's like, "What is this?" And then he opens the folder, and it's the porn pics <laughs> of his wife, and he's like, "Oh my love." My tendre romance. And he speaks in French. So that was giving personality to the spy. I don't feel any personality. I don't feel any goal in this. That's a very generic environment with generic characters, generic uh, surroundings, and they're just really throwing, shooting at each other. In a way, it makes me really think of Unreal. People will remember the game Unreal. You know, these days they have the Unreal Engine on which they develop a lot of games. Uh, but back in the days, there was the game named Unreal. And it makes me think about this. It was all about poo -poo, shooting bazookas and shooting explosions uh, against each other. And it was kind of chaotic shooter style. So this one doesn't have the sound, but we can see some further gameplay. Fire here. Lots of jumping. In Unreal, there was a lot of jumping and a lot of flying in the air. But from that perspective, you look at this game and it's like, what, what, is, what is better here than Unreal? Because Unreal, Unreal Tournament 2004, says FD. That's the problem. We're in 2024. We're 20 years after Unreal. This is... This has slightly better graphics than Unreal, and that's it. This is uh, not particularly more interesting than Unreal. I mean, it's the same thing, basically. It's poo poo poo, jump, 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 fire, fire, fire. It's just, uh, you know, it's 2024 graphics, and that's it. Alright, so that was it for the gameplay. We have another gameplay video here. Uh, this is a guy trying to escape some scene. Again, there's no sound on this one. <coughs> okay, shooting with the arbalet. I don't know what's the English word for this weapon, but... Shooting balls of fire, some shielding. And people are constantly uh, running back to these health signs that are healing. So you constantly want to get healed to continue the fight. All right. And then we have a last video. Um, Matches felt frenetic, he says. Crossbow, that is the name of this object. A crossbow. But I don't know why it keeps pausing. The, the video keeps pausing. But I can, I can re-click play every time. Yeah, so it's like hiding, shooting, hiding be behind the wall, throwing some fireballs, flying... That is just a, a basic shooter. So I don't see anything fundamentally wrong about the development of the game, but everything was wrong in kind of the way they implemented it. And here you have one of the characters. This is a mom. 
You know what's the, the role of a mom in computer gaming? It's to come and ruin the game because spaghetti is ready or something or, or because you, you've, you've spent enough time on the computer and now it's, it's time to come uh, to the table and play in family with cards or whatever. A mom shouldn't be in the fucking game. This is traumatizing for a young man trying to become an expert at a game and he sees a, a lesbian soccer mom type with short hair in the game. You have just invaded his private space. You, you have invaded the safe space of gaming. Rodi Sid says, Mom Spaghetti, you only get one shot. <laughs> <laughs> Quoting Eminem. <laughs> Quoting Eminem raps here. Uh, here we have a Concord tweet. Someone was saying, yo, these Concord tweets aged well. Uh, so on September, they were saying victory in response to players winning and leveling up. Uh, Rudy Gamer was saying 12 maps, 16 characters, 6 modes, no pet battle past, strong roadmap, absolute quality. Now see, this is where my game will have 500 different characters items, 10,000 plants, 10,000 animals, each of them with recipes with their meat and their fruits. No, 16 characters, 12 map, that is not sufficient. Uh, Shady Jesus says only 12 people have leveled their character up to 100 and got the platinum trophy on the game. Okay. Uh, this guy was apparently paid to be happy about Concord. He was saying, I really cannot stress enough just how utterly perfect Concord is. The negativity this game received before even release is one of the biggest travesties in gaming. I feel partially responsible and it sickened me, to be honest. I hope so much it succeeds and folks give it a chance. Well, it is now withdrawn. Jackie Chan says, have you seen George Sprav's channel on YouTube? He makes all kinds of crazy stuff with crossbows and bows and stuff. Very relaxing. No, I haven't seen. I can check. Now, a word of caution to future gamer developers, game developers, and to myself. Don't name your game something that has been a symbol. I don't, am I the only one to know this because I'm French? Concord is a symbol of failure. And when you name something Concord, you are damning it to... You're recruiting all of the mimetic forces of pe people who expect something called Concord to fail. Why? Because Concord is this, is this model of plane, a French plane that never made money because it was too big, because it was pouring money into making this giant plane that would be the, the biggest plane to go uh, above the speed of sound. And it was just too megalomaniac and... There was just no demand, and it didn't work enough, and it was not viable, and it totally became unviable to produce. And it's retired from service now. And in France, there is this whole, you know, there is this expression, the con don't be a concord. <laughs> How would you name your game concord? That, that doesn't, for a French mind, it's, un it's ridiculous. Now, I don't know, maybe... Maybe English programmers don't know about the story of the Concorde, but it seemed to me that we have heard, uh, I've heard on interviews and on mainstream shows, people talk about the Concorde. Uh, new guy says, but Concorde means friendship. Yeah, well, this is, this is where you're already setting up for the mimetics around your game to be, oh, it's woke, oh, and it's about everyone is a friend. And so you're already setting up for failure. I mean, look at this. Whoever greenlit Concord at Sony after seeing these character designs should pay back the $200 million. Mom, soccer mom, just with the arm shooting some grenades. The uh, kind of revolutionary communist Marxist queer black woman. The uh, overweight twerker black woman. 
and another overweight twerker black woman with the AK. None of these people can sustain uh, the success of a game. So stop, s stop like having, you're making it very difficult for white males who are the only c white males and ma Asian males. Okay, those are the only clientels for games. <laughs> Especially if it's a game you have to pay for. Now, free games on the phone. People say, oh no, Jeff, the statistics are in. In 2024, there is as much female gaming as there is men. No, 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 no. You are talking about free iPhone games. Females will play free iPhone games. That doesn't make them gamers. If you don't have a desktop computer, don't even come to me. You talk to the hand, okay? If, if you don't have a desktop computer, talk to the hand. You are not a gamer. Talk to the fucking hand. And GameStop was laughing their ass off. <laughs> in, the, in the tweet that they did, where, where they said, I have some bad news for you. The guy had not yet played the game that he had bought at GameStop. He said, you were the ones that sold it to me. <laughs> and GameStop, re <laughs> GameStop replied with the shy squirrel meme. The kind of, oops. <laughs> oh my god, people are dunking so hard on... On, uh, on Concord. It's been hilarious to research this subject. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!